Hi everybody, good morning. This is Jean here, Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. Must excuse my appearance. I've been running around this morning. Um, I have just finished my quilt, my row by row quilt top. Uh, the next bit of my video is showing how I finished putting it together. And again, this part of my putting it th together quilt is not a tutorial. I sort of sliced and diced and jiggery pokered making my quilt fit, making my rows fit. I had to add some, I had to cut some off, but I showed along the way that I wasn't sweating the small stuff. I putting my quilt together and 99% of the time you want to do a quilt precisely to the med to the perfect measurements. But if you're, um, stressing or uh, have found that a, a, a quilt row is too small or is too large, then this is where I've come in right now with my quilt here. The, the top row is too big, the bottom row is too small, but I've sort of cut some, pe some blocks off. I don't care. It's fine. I've made it fit. I believe it's, um, I have to measure it. I'll put the measure. Nice, nice throw quilt. I've made the borders um, asymmetrical. I've put the one border at my uh, Dresden plate over here with a two inch border and I've used, I've done a four inch border on the other side. Oh, just on a, on the side and two inch border on the top and bottom. I've used my pink fabric here um, that I think as I always say it reads as pink. Very very girly girly traditional looking quilt. So the next bit of my video is showing how I put this thing together and um, how then I've got to process how I'm going to quilt it. I may send it out or I may do it myself but that's the that's for to come. But I am sewing. I was sewing but um, very quickly I just want to thank you all. Oh my word for all of your kindness and your love and your condolences um, on our last video from my husband whose brother had died. Um, Stephen, we've gotten literally hundreds of comments and I'm, I can't uh, thank you all personally typing on the comments. So please, I'm taking this opportunity to thank every single one of you um, from the bottom of my heart and from Ian's heart. He really, really appreciates the kind words um, and the prayers and the condolences sent to him um, at this time. Thank you so, so very much. Wow, it was overwhelming, the, uh, the love and the, the kindness. And um, yeah, we just appreciate it like no one's business, how blessed we are. So anyway, thank you again for that. This is a, uh, my row along with Jean quilt. I'm done it, <laughs> however I did it. <laughs> You'll see as I go along, it's fine. All right, folks, thanks again. And I hope you have a lovely day. Love from the true loves, bye-bye. So as I was saying in the beginning, I'm going to be working on my sashing between all of my rows. Now I've just pinned this up. I haven't even done my top row or my bottom row that I had done in my last tutorial. The one down here, my sort of wonky checkerboard. As you can see, I've chosen from a distance what looks like a solid pink. Now somebody did ask, well, I thought you used a solid for sashing. This is not a solid. This is almost a, a little daisy floral print for my uh, my separating, my sashing. I'm going to be putting one on each row. That's including the sashing rows here. As you can see, I'll put it one up here and one th there, completely separating all of my rows. But from a distance, I always say from a distance, what does that read? What does that pink read? It reads a solid. I just like it. I think it's a little bit more interesting sometimes. This is a, obviously an all over the place scrappy quilt and I love the little, uh, uh, as it were, reads a dot, the pink and the white. Now what I am going to be doing, I'm having to put this quilt together. So as you see, I have my Dresden row here, which I made, uh, I have to make I think one more and then f add a little bit of fabric down there because I don't, don't think I have enough. I'll make one more Dresden row and then I'll put together my rows 
and then put together my uh, put together my horizontal rows and then make it wider by putting on my vertical row. I'll, I'll be there pretty much um, um, each step as I can show you, although it's a big job now. I'm going to be putting this together. Um, I, as I was saying before, it's asymmetrical. I have this row over here and I'm not going to have anything over there except a pink. I am going to be having a wider pink on this side and then I'll be binding it. I don't know how. I, I'm not quite sure how I'll be binding it, but it's a little bit, it's a little bit asymmetrical. But um, as you can see, I like that pink punctuating it. It's sort of a girly, girly quilt. Just a little throw. Interesting. So I'm, I'm, I'm cutting my strips out here for my sashing between my rows. And I'm going to be using my trusty Fiskars uh, rotary cutter ruler combo. This is a 6 inch by 24 inch uh, cutter that I have. The rotary cutter is hidden underneath. And the cutting edge here which I do always my two ruler method I will put this over here my lovely little ruler to one and a half inches I'll use my second ruler and I go I find my one and a half inch mark from there and there I shift my ruler all the way up there so it's a perfect one and a half inch when I push down on this cutter this uh, cutter here which goes up and down then I, it will slice off my fabric. I love this ruler. I got mine on Amazon. I do believe they have them at Joanne Fabrics, but I did get mine on Amazon. I'll check that again so it didn't shift. My one and a half inch, like so. And then I just push down. There's no way that you can get cut on this. I'm holding my ruler down and just firmly pressing the rotary cutter. Slices it right off beautifully like that. So I'll just continue cutting however many of these. Uh, I'll start out because, I, as I said, I'm going to be sewing them all together then, making a long strip, like so. And I'll just continue. Love my Fiskars ruler. Everybody says, they should sponsor me. They really should, because I love this. Although, I have to tell you guys, I've had this ruler for <laughs> years. Actually, I think I have two of them. Um, I think it, um, Ian bought me one. But I've had either one or two of these rulers for years, and I have never changed the rotary blade. Ever, ever, ever. I don't even know how to. But look at this thing. Look how beautifully that cuts. You just push down. You hold, push down. You're nowhere near a blade, and look how beautifully that slices off. So I'll just continue cutting. I don't know how many strips. Whatever. <laughs> So I'm going to be um, sewing these strips together, just like this. And I'm choosing to do a, uh, a bias seam here. That's way, that way it's sort of, it's not just a, a square, a, a straight seam that you see in the sashing. You can hardly see that at all anyway. So either way, you can just do it, um, you can do it, uh, you know, right sides together. Or I do it on the bias. Now when I'm sewing and I've have a uh, selvage like that as you can see I just cut that selvage off to make a nice square and I will put my fabric to make the bias seam or to make the slant seam I don't know what it's called um, I'll put my on that angle I don't know what that's called it looks like an upside down L is it I don't know so just like that and to end like that and then what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start I've lowered my I've uh, made my uh, stitch length just slightly smaller because I really want this to stay and I'm going to aim from that corner to this corner down here. Just a straight line, you don't have to mark it. Just a straight line to make that seam right off as so. Pinch and pull and then I'll see if it's okay, which it is, and then I can trim off to a quarter of an inch. put my rows together. So as you can see I'm working on putting my rows together and this was this is going to be my top row this wonky checkerboard and then I put just a pink. Now I'm doing my um, turn dash block turn dash row and I've taken my measurements my loose measurements off of my top row which is about 
oh, I don't know, I sort of sliced it half and however, however long these rows sort of, whether they were a little bit longer, a little bit shorter, I sort of went in the middle of it. The trick now is to just absolutely lay my sashing. Do not pull in any means. You think, oh, I'm going to make it nice and small. Don't pull it at all. You almost want to push it back behind under the, the um, presser foot because cotton stretches and even the little bit of cotton if you even are if you're at the if you're a professional quilter working to the eighth of an inch even if you stretch your your pre-cut fabric a little bit it'll be too long or it'll be too short because it stretches so i can't emphasize enough just to lay that sashing strip or your your um, separating strip down onto your next row. This one I did row sashing row, and then on this one here I have my my um, flying geese row. Okay, my it'll be my flying geese row again with sashing. So what I do want to do with this one though is I know I made it a little bit longer. What I want to do is I want to find the middle. This is just a little thing. I want to find the middle of my sashing row which is right about there I just want to make it finger press that like so because I know my flying geese there's that there's that mark are some of them are going one way and some of them are going the other way so I just want to put this middle point right in the middle where is it where'd it go oh right there <laughs> right there of my um of my my uh, sashing I, I, hopefully you get that my separate I should call these my separating so there's my flying geese like so and what I am going to do is I'm going to clip or pin this that's right in the middle of the quilt okay as I hopefully you can you can understand that that just visually you won't really notice it but that flying geese coming this way and the flying geese going that way will be right in the middle of this row so what I am going to do because I know I did make this a little bit longer I'm going to figure out what when I pin it or clip it is I think I'll start from the middle and go to the end and look at that it's almost absolutely perfect it's almost perfect I'd have to cut off a little tiny bit so what I will do on this one I will actually start my row at the middle of my flying geese. That's it, row by row. Having finished all the blocks, you can't call it a sampler quilt. Sorry, it's all scrunched up on my work table here. But yeah, it's turning out real sweet, row by row. And I love that pink, as you can see. It just uh, gives your eye a slight place to rest so that you look at each row. Quite like it. So I'll continue with my heart row. It's turned out pretty good, except <laughs> the first row I ever... No, 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 it wasn't the first row. One of, this, one of the rows I made, my tulip row and my sunflower row is a little bit too long so now I have to figure out how I minus subtract some fabric from this row it's always easy to add but making it smaller um, so what it is I have realized I've just have this pinned up here to show you here try to go slowly it's about an inch too long Right, so I could take in a seam here and a seam here and a seam here. That would really, really lose the points. Um, and I quite like the uh, tulips whole, really whole. I have lined up the sunflowers right in the middle. As you can see, that's what I did first. I did the sunflowers pretty much in the middle. Um, and it's about an inch too long so what I'm going to do <laughs> this is not a tutorial I'm going to just slice off about an inch because to my eye forget that right there to my eye you're still going to see a green leaf and a green leaf 
And also over on that side, you're gonna see a green leaf and a green leaf. It's just gonna be a smaller top green leaf. And then again, my row will fit and it will look really pretty and you won't notice it. <laughs> Well, another quilter will notice it, but like your friend who's you're going to give the quilt to will not notice it. And if they do notice it, then they're not your friend. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut off about an inch on each side and make my row fit. Now, I've just sewn my tulip row onto my heart row and onto my sashing. And all of these are pretty much the same size. I'm not quite sure how, how what size they are, but these were, as I said, about an inch too um, big. So <laughs> do as I do as I don't say. Don't do as I do, because... Professional quarters are having a heart attack me doing this, but what I'm doing is I'm just my quarter is nice and square up here And I'm just going to find out on this um, Ruler here which everything is nice and square up and what I'm doing is I'm just going to slice off that bit of block But it's okay Because at the end of the day You still see a lovely green leaf. Do you see that? I am not sweating that. Anybody else is looking at it, you're, you're going to see a pretty green leaf. It's fine. Not the same size as that. Once the borders are on and the sides are on, it's fine. It's fine. And we'll do the exact same thing over here. This is what I mean. Obviously, this is just me winging it. You don't want to um, be off so very much, but that's pr pretty much the only row I'm off. I'm just going to do this one again straighten everything up here it's all nice in here and it's only about uh, as about an inch maybe not even yeah, about an inch I'm just going to slice that right along and you'll never ever know the difference so I have to make my Dresden row at let me just sit here at 70 about 71 inches. What I've done, I have a Dresden and a fill-in and it worked out well. One, two, three, four. And then I separated it down here. One, two, three, four. And then it matches down the bottom. I'm so pleased how this is turning out. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just finish it up and I'm going to put a border, the same pink. I'm going to put a border all the way around on the side here, but I'm going to be doing a two inch border on the top, the bottom, and this side over here. And then I'm going to be doing a four inch border over there just to make it a little bit wider. And then I'm going to do some interesting quilting on that pink edge. It's not going to be quite as wide as that. It's going to be asymmetric.